What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm back today to give you a review of the Color Plus collaboration with Saucony on this Grid Shadow 2 in this Beach Ramble colorway. So Color Plus Company is a fashion label that was founded by Jordan Page, a creative based out of Brooklyn, New York. And this marks his second collaboration with Saucony, which is actually part of a three shoe pack with the other two shoes set to release I believe later this year. So this one released on September 7th here in Canada for a price of 210 Canadian dollars or 140 down in the US. And this Grid Shadow 2 was actually a performance running shoe that Saucony released back around 96-97. But for this collaboration with Color Plus Company, Paige is turning the silhouette and infusing it with details that give it much more of a trail running shoe vibe. So all three pairs are inspired by nature, with this one, Beach Ramble, taking inspiration from coastal trails and the colors that you would see when you walk along a beach. And then after this one, there's also two more colorways, one nicknamed Forest Wander and the third one nicknamed Arctic Trek. So first things first, here's a quick look at the packaging. So I love this box. You can see this comes in a custom box that's inspired by the colorway of the shoe. So we have this sand graphic finish on the top, along with this footprint, and it features both Saucony and Color Plus co-branding on the very top lid. And then on the sides of the box, you can see we have a bunch of this beach-like detailing, which is really nice as well. So I would imagine the other two colorways to come, the boxes for those pairs probably will be inspired by those respective colorways as well. So diving into the details of this shoe, as we start things off on the toe box, this is covered in this textile layer, which feels like canvas to the touch. We have a front toe guard on the edge, which is constructed out of a rubber-like material, giving it added durability. And then underneath this, the sides of the toe box, this is entirely constructed out of the shaggy long-haired suede. And then embroidered on the lateral side only, we have the Saucony stripe in white. So moving downwards, you can see we have more of that canvas-like material, along with more overlays of suede. And then the top two eyelets, we have these metallic circular eyelets, which has this aged and almost distressed look to it. Covering the area where the Saucony stripe is, here we have this patterned leather, which to me kind of reminded me of Nike's elephant print. So beneath this on the bottom, we have more of these jagged overlays of suede, along with more of that printed leather as well. And then on the back of the shoe, we have Saucony embroidered across the suede on the bottom. And then above this, we have Color Plus branding, which is embroidered in yellow. And then the top of the heel is covered in more of that canvas-like material that we saw earlier on the sides and the toe box. As far as the laces go, so these come with three different lace options, which was really nice to see. The one that I prefer are these flat style laces in this tonal beige tone, but they also come with more of a clay colored lace, along with a more trail inspired rope lace. So honestly, all three lace options I thought were really, really solid. Beneath this, the tongue is constructed out of that same beige colored textile, which feels like canvas once again. And then embroidered on the top, we have Saucony branding, and then beneath this, we have Color Plus branding. The back of the tongue and the interior of the shoe, this is covered in this beige colored mesh. And then taking a look at the insoles, so these come with a foam line insole, nothing special here at all. But stamped onto the heel, we have both Saucony and Color Plus co-branding once again. So the upper of the shoe sits atop this foam midsole, which is entirely painted in this tonal dark beige or light brown color. And then incorporated within the midsole but not visible to the eye, we have Saucony's grid technology, which essentially gives the wearer more impact protection and support along the heel of the shoe. And you can think of it basically like a tennis racket, where it'll absorb the impact of your heel crashing onto the ground and then rebound it back to you to help propel you forward. And then finally, turning this pair over to the bottom. So here's a look at the outsole. This is constructed out of a mix of this dark tan or light brown colored rubber, along with more of a clay colored rubber. And we have this triangular shaped traction pattern on the forefoot and the Saucony stripe in the center. And then on the heel, we have this almost diamond shaped cutout. And there's a squishy rubber insert here as well, which I thought was kind of interesting. I'm not exactly sure what this was here for, but it's a unique feature nonetheless. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. And in terms of sizing, so Saucony's in my opinion run a little bit more snug than other brands, for example, like Nike and New Balance. So for example, I wear a 10 to 10 and a half in the Shadow 6000. And keep in mind, my foot measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. So Saucony Canada, big shout out to them. They sent me over this pair in a size 10, which is my true size. And generally speaking, it fits me, but it is more on the snug side. So if you have a really wide foot, or if you like more of a roomy, spacious toe box, you could go up half a size, which in my case is my Shadow 6000 size. But if you have a narrow foot, or you'd like that more snug one-to-one -one fit, then you can just stick true to size and it should be okay. 
Moving on to the comfort, so generally speaking, the comfort of this shoe isn't bad. Trying these on straight out of the box, I could feel a decent amount of squishiness underfoot. It wasn't extremely soft and extremely pillowy, which honestly is probably a good thing if you want to wear these for many hours. But yes, there was a noticeable plushness underfoot. So if you're looking for a shoe that has sort of a chunky dad shoe look to it, but it still gives you an adequate amount of cushioning, I think this would be a solid pickup. Finally, in terms of the quality and the craftsmanship on this shoe. So first off, material quality I thought was pretty solid. The suede are genuine suede and it feels very nice to the touch. And aside from that though, I like the variety of the materials used, like these textile or canvas layers and this printed leather I thought was a nice touch as well. So kudos to Saucony and Color Plus Company for kind of going outside of the box and giving us a unique mix of materials which I thought really worked well together. And in terms of the build, same thing, other than some very minor glue stains on the midsole, the rest of the shoe was pretty pristine. So I came away feeling pretty impressed with how these were in person. So with all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet, I'll lace them up for you and I'll show you guys how these look. For Color Plus Company's second collaboration with Saucony, I thought they did a pretty decent job on this grid shadow 2 silhouette. The thing I love most about this shoe is the variety of the materials. And I think those material choices really translates the theming of the shoe really well on this silhouette. From an actual colorway perspective though, honestly though to me it looks a little bit bland. I feel like it's even missing maybe one added pop of color which would have really taken the shoe over the top. But if you're looking for a decent quality material, decent comfort shoe that's made up of a pretty wearable color palette, then I think this would be a pretty solid choice. For me, I'm personally more excited for the upcoming two colorways, the forest and the arctic pairs. I'm just gravitating more towards those colorways more so than this one. But yeah, let me know in the comment section down below, what do you guys think about this beach ramble colorway between Color Plus Company and Saucony? For anyone watching, did you also pick up a pair of these? I'm pretty sure these are still available on a lot of stores websites right now. So if you guys are kind of on the fence to pick these up, I probably wouldn't hesitate too long. So as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, follow me on X or Twitter at sean.go, and visit my website as well at seango.ca. Before I end this video, another huge, huge thank you goes out to Saucony Canada. Thank you so much for sending me over this pair, and I'll catch you guys all in my next review.